So they ended it off. They ended the event off perfectly and what most people expected it to be. The Wakanda cast comes out. Um, you get a Kevin Feige man brings out uh, uh, music performers. Yeah, we get the trailer. Brian, you saw the trailer. I saw the trailer. I think they showed us everything. I think they showed us everything based on the leaks based on what we've seen, based on the conversation that we had, this movie is gonna deliver on each of those aspects. Which aspects are those? The memorial for Chadwick T'Challa. Very emotional film this was going to be. Um, They showed, I think pretty much the birth of uh, Namor, right? Exactly. Yeah. Which I also think is a sort of uh, foreshadowing for something else. First for that, Yes. But also foreshadowing the birth of an heir. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair to enough. the yeah. throne. Um, I don't know about you, Brian, but that performance by Angela Bassett is Oscar worthy. So I want to back up two seconds to your point. So they yeah. they do the musical performance on the stage. They bring out the cast. They bring out Ryan Coogler. You know, very nostalgic commentary from from everyone involved. I need to do a little bit of going back in detail. But I thought this was the best trailer Marvel has ever done. Wow. I don't know how I feel about that claim. I. I was kind of going through the catalog in my mind. Um, I would probably tell you weirdly, I think my favorite trailer up until now was the to the end trailer right before Endgame, where they literally recapped the whole universe and kind of gave you a snippet of the final. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was like the perfect encapsulation of the history. Uh, so I liked how they structured it. But like as a standalone film, I couldn't yeah. think of a, another individual movie that got you in the mood that struck a perfect musical note I thought for what they're trying to capture like the cover of No Woman No Cry um, and then gave you as you said it gave you what you already knew if you were up on the leaks and if you didn't I think there's some wow moments in terms of scale in terms of look that's very different than the first film i love the aquatics like you know i know some people are going to make the avatar comparison but i actually think it's it is it stands different than cameron's yeah. color palette but i love what i saw there i wanted to see more of namor because tena cuerta looks like he's like six five like 275 <laughs> pounds from the back <laughs> it's like it's just kind of gonna rush the pastor like what's what's happening <laughs> but um but yeah, no, and then obviously, like you said, the memorial, Bassett's kind of look like monologue, and then just the tease of the suit. We wondered if we would see the suit at all. And just the tease of the suit at the end, which, you know, I had, we had a little exchange about it. I went back, I kept trying to freeze frame it. You read into the color palette at all? Because there's a little gold on uh, there. Of the suit, I, I don't think he's Killmonger though. No, but I'm wondering to your point where the rumor is that he's the inspiration for her becoming the Black Panther, is there a nod there teasing you a little bit about like, because that suit is much more otherwise like the one that he wore in the Warrior. first one than the one that uh, T'Challa was wearing. So I I loved it. Let, let's see what that, that conversation, when that happens. I loved it though. The, like the battle and the war scenes that they were showing, I was all in, like all in. I was like, like it just, I don't know. Like I said, between the music and the scale and the shots and, and the emotion, and they show Chadwick, but they show it perfectly, a mural, right? Like, a, like it's, you see his face, but you don't see like, oh, we're just gonna like put Chadwick in a flashback, like full marks. Yeah. I literally think it's the best trailer they've ever done. Yeah, that that uh, funeral is gonna be, it's gonna seem celebratory because everybody's dancing and stuff like that. But I guess that's just the tradition when someone passes and um, it just looks, 
amazing uh, is the word I would say. Uh, it looks grittier too. Like it's bright, but like maybe it's just a trailer, but there's less CGI evident to me in a lot of those shots. I don't know what it is. Like it felt a little more like tangible. So I don't know if that's by design, but like it was, it still had a lot of color, but it just, for whatever reason, I was like, oh, this feels more like winter soldiery in terms of it's like, real world feel to it uh i don't know that was just like an impression i got but i loved it absolutely loved it that was fantastic this movie's gonna do amazing i think this is gonna be when angela bassett was was yelling and, oh, and, and man. i don't know I'm if that was acting you. i don't know if that was acting you know and they show they showed uh letitia right on the on the beach crying and you're like that probably is a scene that that was happening on set a hundred times over for these people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be some raw emotion into, in this film and people are, are, I think everyone who watches this film and enjoyed the first black Panther and, uh, I guess has, because no one was at, you know, Chadwick's funeral and stuff like that. This will be their opportunity to see, I guess people saying goodbye to him or yeah, you know, so I just think this movie's gonna be amazing. Um as far as box office numbers, I think it's gonna break its previous record. Um what I, I don't know what else to say, Brian, uh, regarding this film. I, I think we've pretty much um hit on the parts that I think will be um, impactful for everyone. And it certainly um, displays some of that, uh, some of the stuff that you talked about, Brian, in our previous show. Again, that's not going to come out. Um, of the war yeah. uh, uh, scene that is is, is going to be epic. Yeah, I think that's, that's the thing that like stood out to me thematically is this, you know, in, in the first Black Panther, you obviously get a culminating battle at the end where sort of the different tribes are involved. But I think very deliberately, that's a, you get the sense that that's a contained conflict, right? This is mm -hmm. a, a Wakanda on Wakanda conflict where there are two visions of what Wakanda should be in the world. And that's what mm -hmm. you're seeing. This feels very properly of world against world, right? This is Atlantis against Wakanda, and that's a very different scale. And I think the trailer very effectively communicates both that both of these worlds and cultures are beautiful and have their own distinct features, but clearly there's a real deep-seated opposition. And I, I think that's per like that's perfect because that separates you from the first film, but it gets you interested as a mainstream audience. Yeah, I mean, and that goes to the when we talk about you know it's not fair to compare the film content to Black Adam's film content, but the reality is they are two weeks apart on the calendar. So you do have to compare how they're being set up and how the audience is responding. And I see this trailer today and I'm like, okay, we got to wait for the reviews. I get it. We got to wait to see like what the, what the kind of the feedback is. But this was perfect for feeding the hype. It was everything that I thought it would be. This was the this was the trailer I was waiting for. Everyone, I think, especially Ryan Coogler, Coogler um, I'm pretty sure he put his heart and soul into this, and everyone involved, um, and it shows. Well, if he outdoes yeah. the first one, he's getting nominated, and the movie's getting nominated. I absolutely agree. No I absolutely agree. I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, yo, I'll be surprised because. The little glimpse of performances that we see um, were uh, very impactful to me anyway. And I think uh, many are going to feel the same. And uh, the performances are going to be, um, the performances are going to be praised. And uh, I can't wait for this movie, Brian. This comes out in the fact the fact that this is coming out this year because we've been talking about twenty you know phase five and twenty twenty four and twenty this is coming out this year you know so 
I can't wait for this movie. This is perhaps, is this your number one? This is your number one, number one film, right? That you're waiting for this uh, um, well, most anticipated. Well, so like I said, I didn't rank this one just because it's its own, because this is the end of phase four. Ah, okay. So I, I had Ant-Man one, at one for phase five only. Got it, got it, got it, got it. I took Fantastic Four out, I took the Avengers movies out, and I took Wakanda Forever out, because that's its own thing. But yeah. yeah, look, I mean, we talked about in our Marvel show, which I think we will put out, State of Marvel, Marvel needs not a financial hit because they're still making money, but they need a movie where everyone, where it's in the zeitgeist, everyone is talking about it. They, they need an event. That's what they had. They were the event, the main yeah. event. And they yeah. kind of have lost that. Top Gun Maverick just took that and flew off into supersonic speeds with it. They need an event, and this trailer makes you think like they're about to take the mantle back, yeah, and make it tough, you know, not just for Black Adam, but make it tough even for like Avatar 2 a month later. Like, if this oh, yeah. movie is that big, there's an open calendar there for a month. That's what we're talking about. We talk about the billion five potential here. It's yeah, like the calendar is cleared out for this if it's great to where like you could see a global first weekend that is like. Four, five hundred, under seven hundred, some enormous number. <laughs> and then you just roll for three weeks into the holiday season, and then yeah, Avatar will be the number one movie the weekend it opens. But like, yeah, like this, this trailer got me. I watched it like five times. It just back to back. <laughs> I, like, I just got to keep seeing this over and over because it's just that kind of trailer. Yeah, and that was just a teaser, correct? Yeah. So there'll be one more trailer for sure. There'll be one more before we get there. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are excited as we are for Wakanda Forever and for um, the announcements uh, for future projects that are coming soon and those that we've been waiting for. And now, Brian, I said to you in a previous show that um, D23, I, <sighs> Does it have to top this? I don't think so. Because remember, I said I think they have to top this if they're saving their big stuff. No, I'm gonna keep my statement because this, they said they're keeping their biggest announcements for D23. I, I can't wait for D23 to see what sort of announcements that they got because this was amazing to me. All the announcements that we got, and we didn't get a lot of visuals, so I think D23 is gonna show us a little bit more. Um, but the biggest, the big announcement, most likely it will be the mutants. Yeah, I think, and I, that's what I said, like, you know, you're, you're splitting hairs, but like, if you get comprehensive stuff around X-Men and what you're doing with the mutant universe, if you get details around Fantastic Four, if you get, you know, some dead, you know, Deadpool color and confirmation, and then, you know, if they throw in a few nuggets about like who's directing, like maybe like the Russo's coming back to direct Secret Wars, like if they th they can they can add some content just on the Marvel side to where you're like, that's at least on par with what they gave you today in terms of what you're excited for in the long term. And also, yeah. don't forget D23 is going to have a lot of Star Wars, right? This is a Marvel yeah, event, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Star Wars has got it. They're coming at D23 with whatever they got going on, so that's a whole other thing. But but yeah, like if they trot out. You know, here's how we're structuring the X-Men, and here's the first few people that we have lined up to play these parts. Like, it's a ma that's a massive news. Like, if there's a new Wolverine, if there's a new Magneto, that's a massive announcement. So that yeah. is like, yeah. Because again, those characters are going to be with you for ten plus years. Yeah. So. Fantastic Four. Like, if we get that announcement, we've heard some casting rumors. Like, if we get finalized here's the family here's you know oh we didn't even talk about they weren't going to show doom in the in the wakanda forever teaser but we know the high probability he's at the end of that movie too maybe we find out who's playing him under the under the mask like those are all Listen, big deals. i don't think we're going to see who's on the he um who's under the mask but we're going to get that same thanos treatment um with how thanos was revealed in after after avengers it's just going to be a guy in his suit Perhaps yeah, I think yeah. That, so we there's been this rumor starting to go around, which I think is at least interesting that Doom as Doom is going to be kind of 
a little Darth Vader-y that there's a guy in the suit and then there's an actor voicing Doom when he's in costume. I'm, I don't know what you think about that. It's interesting. I didn't really consider that, but that's an interesting way to get Doom to sound a certain way when he's in the mask. Because I am kind of expecting that we will see, you know, Victor as Victor in an earlier iteration somewhere in this universe, right? He went to school. What, he went to school with Reed, right? They were at college together and they're in the origins. So I'm assuming that will show up somewhere in this MCU. So they'll need a guy or an actor who's not in a suit, but I yeah, they that. got, I was like, oh, that, that opens up some possibilities. Yeah, they, they got time. Yeah, they got, but I think I heard that that's what they were going to do with Doom at the end of Wakanda. Is just going to be some guy, um, playing the part for that uh end credit scene. Um, I also they did, did hear that, some, Thanos, right? that they did that, yeah, yeah, yeah. the guy who turns in Avengers One is not Roland because he no, doesn't no. get cast till later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did hear some rumors that Russo's because they've been talking about uh Secret Wars a lot, yeah. And I, I heard rumors that he is, that they are going to be the directors for Secret Wars. I mean, you know, if nothing else, you got to say, like, there is a skill unto itself in quarterbacking productions that are that large. Yeah. And if you're Disney and you're Kevin Feige, there's not a lot of reason to mess around with those. So you might as well godfather them to say, like, we'll save you. You don't have to do the single movies anymore but for the giant ones we come back we need, for that we need you to coordinate yeah 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 yeah. I mean, there's gonna be a hefty paycheck for them but yeah san diego comic-con was a successful marvel i don't know about i'm pretty sure everybody would agree with us or agree with it themselves and that dc just didn't impress, man. Just didn't impress. And I agree with you that The Rock is doing whatever he can to get hype for Black Adam. It just isn't working. It just isn't working. Because every time you show us something, it's the same thing. It's just The Rock and a few things here and there, but nothing else. Yeah, and I so, think you are seeing, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't put it totally on, you know, Warden Brothers in the sense that, like I said, you're seeing a company in transition. And like you're yeah. seeing the difference between Disney, as we talked about, and seeing some of our other shows, hell bent on getting to the subscriber numbers, hell bent on getting the content out. So you're seeing the full firepower of a company that's like, yeah, we'll green, we're ready to green light everything. And we got Kevin Feige, you know, at the controls, who kind of knows for better or for worse, not always perfect, but knows what he wants to do. So you see yeah, that yeah, yeah. that that unity. Whereas on the DC side, it's just tra it's just transitional. They don't have a lot right now that they can count on, and they got problems with what's in the pipeline. And so the Rock is what they had. As I said, I don't I feel for them because it's not really like they're totally their fault. But yeah. man, it feels like a mismatch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. I know this was a long one, but it was warranted because of what we were covering. Um, but um, thank you for joining us once again. We really do appreciate it. Please hit that like and subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing. Um, share with your friends. Start up the conversation in the comment section. What do you guys think of uh, Wakanda Forever the, in, the, in the teaser trailer that we got? What do you guys think of Secret Wars and this whole multi multiverse saga that they, they named it? Um, there's just a bunch of questions regarding each of these things uh, that, were, that was announced that um, uh, we want to hear your thoughts on. Um, Brian, any last words before we wrap it up? No, but it, it, today was such a good il under illustration of why these events are great for fans, even though we weren't there in person. It's just like you get hyped, you know, they, 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 you know, you do it the, with the right content and the right touches. It's like we've been kind of complaining, you're not complaining, but we've been kind of wondering what's going on at Marvel and. You know, yeah, we've been complaining. Yeah. We've been complaining. <laughs> and I think justifiably so. I yeah, think they've had some problems, right? But then they they did enough. They did enough today, and certainly I think capped it with that Wakanda Forever trailer to where you you know if you you walk out of that event and you're like, okay, like yeah, yeah. Give, me, give me give me all eighteen episodes tonight. <laughs> so I'm here to fall. Oh my so god! I release three at a time. <laughs> 
They got to yeah. release three at a time. They three at a time? They can't do 18 weeks of one. I'm going to lose it if they do it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. But that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.